Welcome back to the Morning Blend. After living in America for over a decade, E.J. Ko's parents returned to South Korea for work, leaving her and her brother behind in California. Her mother wrote letters over the years in Korean seeking forgiveness and love, but E.J. didn't fi finally understand them until she found the letters years later. E.J. writes about this in her new memoir, The Magical Language of Others. And we are happy, happy to welcome E.J. Ko to the Morning Blend on the Yellow Couch. Thanks for being here. Good morning. Thank, thank you for having me. Thanks so for being here. Be yeah, this is, I think, an incredible story. Before we get into the letters, talk just a little bit about when your when your parents left. You were 15. Uh, I was 14, 14 when they got the job offer, and then 15 the following years when my father accepted the offer, and my mother and father moved to South Korea, and then they moved me to live with my brother in like 90 miles away from where we were into this uh city called Davis into mm -hmm. a little house and initially it began my father's contract was a separation of two years and it became three and then five and seven and nine mm. before um, I moved back in with them and we reunited in Seattle Washington Wow so yes. how old was your brother at the time that your parents left uh, he was 19 okay was so 19. did you did he essentially raise you yes yes so when, when I moved to Davis to live with my brother he became um, we were both quite young but essentially he was my only guardian and so we made do with our lives there. And did you graduate from high school? Yes, um, I'm so happy to say I graduated from high school and went to college. And Did your parents financially support the two of you or, and did yes. they stay in touch? Yes, um, they, it, the, the move and the job was for a, a greater financial stability and mm -hmm. means. And I think there is this sort of uh, different uh, cultural uh, acceptance where it's better to pay for your kids than to be near them mm. whereas in sort of the western idea is you know whether you can or cannot pay for your kids you want to be very close to them yeah. and so it's a new way of seeing the family structure and all these separated families which is a, a quite common actually yeah 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 well I, I wonder because if that's that's part of the culture that you grew up in but yet you're living in a western society how right. you felt as a as a 15 year old with her parents leaving and, and feeling abandoned at that age. Exactly. I think that is, uh, you touched on the, the very essence of the sort of pain and trauma from that experience is that I was born and raised in the States and so I have different expectations of what a family is and what parents can do for you and yeah. so I'm also going to this school that my brother takes me to every morning and there's um, parent-teacher conferences mm -hmm. and parents picking up their children. There's Christmas, there's Thanksgiving, there's, and especially in a town that's smaller, there's so much emphasis on family and communal activities, yes. even with your neighbors. So that sort of thing was, um, can, could be heartbreaking. Absolutely. Was your brother working? Uh, my brother was going to school, so he was a college student and he was working and trying to manage his other responsibilities while taking care of me. And I was avoiding my responsibilities, so I wasn't going to school. I was um, a very bad teenager in many ways. And um, I, I had developed an eating disorder and I would attempt my life regularly. Mm -hmm. But amidst all of that, my mother would write me letters every single week. And um, I couldn't understand those letters as well but it so happened that many years later I became a poet and a translator mm. and so I took those letters I, I found them later in a shoebox when I reunited with my parents and I had found 49 of them mm -hmm. and I asked um, my mentor Dami Ches she's also a poet and translator what I should do and she told me this incredible piece of information. It's that um, in Buddhist tradition, 49 is the number of days that your soul wanders the earth looking for answers before the afterlife. Mm. And it means this is your work. This is the thing that you must do. And that's how the book came about. I just think that is such that's a cool, cool story and significance to that number. Um, you were re reunited then with your family? Yes. How, how did yeah. that go? And how did you find forgiveness? Right. Um, or they, did you find forgiveness? Yes, yes. I think um, it, 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 for forgiveness is a very um, wonderful thing that I found through poetry. I mean, it, it was through poetry and um, sort of my poetry teachers that surrounded me in college and they sort of believed in me and said, you have these things to say. 
um, when I was writing poems about my mother, they showed me the importance of magnanimity or forgiveness mm -hmm. in a sense that if I can't forgive my mother, then when I write a poem about her, the poem needs to forgive me for not mm. forgiving her. See, that is what a poet does. Yeah. That is what a poem is able to do that we might not be able to do in our sort of everyday personalities. It's, it's accessing this greater magnanimity. So it was really my way into poetry and then the translation that allowed me to see her. And through the histories, there's four generations of women in here. Um, mm. through their histories, not just them as who she needed to be as a mother, but who she was as a little girl and as a daughter. Yeah. Um, I'm guessing that you've come to some sort of more adult understanding of why your parents made the choice that they did and uh, assuming that it's not because they didn't love you and your mm -hmm. brother very much. Mm -hmm. I wonder how it changes, though, how you see your role as... Uh, you don't have any children, right? No, not yet. But I, I wonder if you have children, do you mm -hmm. think that you could ever leave them. I mean, how do you mm -hmm. see that now after your experience? Right. right. I think um, what's so fascinating is looking at my mother's relationship with her mother and my grandmother's relationship with her mother. There's a history of separation and trauma, whether it's um, my mother, both her parents passed away very early. And so that separation seemed more untenable in a way. And so um, it's interesting because you see the history of trauma and the response and reaction as you go into motherhood. So we understand that that trauma is handed down. It's, it's sort of taught into the next generation. Yeah. And so um, currently I'm a researcher on trauma and on Korean history. And what I sort of seek to do is understand the ways in, instead of um, halting the trauma completely, the ways we can reverse it and reverse the damage that preceded us by moving forward and um, sort of having this awareness of not handing that trauma on and that, that, res that begins with resolving it in myself. I, think I that love that. So beautiful. That was got good. A, yeah, you've got a book signing tonight. It's at seven o'clock. People can meet you, get a copy of your book, which is again the magical language of others, a memoir. Boswell Book Company tonight. Her website is this is EJ Co K O H dot com for more. Thanks so much for joining Thank us. You guys so wonderful. Much. Yeah. Just wonderful. stay put for a minute. That was awesome. Thank, Thank you. you.